Come on, boys and girls, the Cotton County Memorial Library presents virtual summer reading program, the Children's Department Special Guest. Come on, everybody, friends one and all, let's come together, let's break down those walls. We're gonna listen and we're gonna learn, having fun all the way. Somebody said, let's listen and learn together. Let's sing and learn forever. Let's listen and learn together. Let's sing and learn forever. Let's listen. Let's listen, sing. Hello, boys and girls, and happy Thumbs Up Thursday. We're excited because we're going to learn math today. And what other guests could we choose than the one and only Magdalene Monroe? Yes, she is the math queen. She's been coming to the local library for over 10 years now, and she is a math teacher locally. So please help me welcome her. Hello, boys and girls. We're excited. We're with the mathematician herself, the queen of math, Mrs. Monroe. How are you? Hello. I am fine, thank you. How are you? It, I'm fine. I had so much fun with you doing the two voice the other day. It was so up, awesome. <laughs> well, now it is math time, Mrs. Monroe. And we're excited because you always have some fun way to learn math and to do math. And please feel free to utilize the spin to read. I know you're not gonna be reading. I don't know if you're gonna read or not. Today I am. So this would be so different because I have never really read a book for the summer reading program. Oh. So most of my program today will be read. Wow. But well, you will still be learning math. I love it. Well, maybe the wheel can help you decide what you're gonna to read today. You yeah. never know. Right, this is awesome. It. Well, please have fun because I know boys and girls, you're going to have lots of fun and put on your listening ears and your seeing eyes because I know you're going to learn something new. I'm going to turn in your hands. Why, thank you. Take thank care of you. you too. Well, hello, everybody. I am so glad to be here with you today. Although things are a bit different, but I'm glad to be here and good to see you. Today, we're gonna be learning about polygons. Excuse me? Oh, what are polygons? Thank you. I'm so glad you asked. Polygons are closed figures that are formed using line segments. Excuse me? What are line segments? Good question. Line segments are part of lines. Let's say if we have this here line here, I can take any part of this line and I create a line segment. So it's just part of a line. So again, a polygon is a closed figure using line segments, whereas the line segments only meet at their endpoints. And when we talk about endpoints, this is an endpoint, this is an endpoint. So, that's a line segment. Now, what about some examples? Some examples of polygons. Let's say if I take this here line segment, and I'm going to just be taping it up to help. Let's say if I take this here. Is that a polygon? No. It's a line segment. It's one line. Okay, what if I add another line segment? Huh, let me see. What if I put it here? Because remember, the definition of a polygon says that they have to connect by their endpoints. So I have this endpoint connected to this endpoint. Is that a polygon? No, not quite, because remember, the first part of the definition said a polygon is a closed figure. And is this figure open? It's open. And basically, what did I just create? It's an angle. I remember us learning about that some programs past. So let's take another line segment. What if I put it here? Oops. 
What if I put it there? Again, it's connected by the endpoints. Is this a polygon? No. Why not? You're right. It's not closed. It's open. It's a shape, but it's an open shape. Uh, let's take a look at that shape. Is there a way we can close these and still have all of the endpoints meet? Can anybody see it? I thought I saw one head. No, I, let's try. What if I take this one? Still need the endpoints meeting here. And if I put it to go this way, and what if I adjust this a little to come this way? What do you notice as I hold that down? Is this a polygon? Yes, I saw that nod, good job. Because all of my endpoints, these line segments are connected by my endpoints and this shape is closed. So this represents, ooh, let me take that down for a minute. This represents a polygon. Now, one other thing I'd like for you to know, how are polygons named? Polygons are named according to the number of sides that they have. I know the way we got our names, our parents just decided to give us whatever name they chose by however means necessary. But polygons are named by the number of sides that they have. How many line segments did I use for this polygon? Can you help me count it? One, two, three. Guess what type of polygon this is? This is a triangle. This is a triangle. When we think about a tricycle, when we think about a tripod, a tricycle has three wheels, a tripod has three stands. This triangle has three sides. So this polygon is a triangle. Now, what happens if I add a, another leg, another line segment? And since Ms. Sheeta wanted me to use the wheel, I think I'll take advantage of this opportunity and start skipping around and let's see. Um, well, I'm going to do one example first. Let's just add one more. We're going to put this here line segment back out here. And we're going to put this line segment out here. And what happens if I add one more line segment across the top? My end points are matching. They're connected at the end points. And if I hold this end point here, by adding one more line segment, it just went from a triangle to a quadrilateral. How many line segments do we have? How many sides? One, two, three, four. And so when we think about quadruplets, we think about four babies. And so this is a quadrilateral, quadrilateral. Now, what's neat about quadrilateral is that every figure that we have that has four sides, they're all quadrilaterals. However, some quadrilaterals are commonly known by other names. Let's say for instance, in this polygon, all these sides are exactly the same length. We have all right angles. So this type of quadrilateral here, we would call a square. But what if I have a figure such as this? This has one, two, three, four sides also. But is this a square? No, we refer to this shape as a rectangle. Well, but again, both of these are known as quadrilaterals. Then we may have other shapes that have four sides. We may have a rumpus. We may have a trapezoid. We may have a parallelogram. Again, depending on what the situation is, it's based on what it's called. But they are all called quadrilaterals. Now, what I want to do with you today is introduce you to or remind you of other names of polygons. 
I'm going to take you up to 12 because I know for a lot of you, you are so familiar with a triangle. You're familiar with the quadrilateral. But let's spin and see which one we're going to get to next. Seven. What if I end up with seven sides? Because I'm going to read, I won't take time to shape it out. But do you all want me to try to put up seven? I have four. What if I do? If I already have four sides up, how many do I need to add to it? Three. Let's see, oh, this might be a little challenging, but I would go on and tell you, when we have seven sides, it is called a heptagon. Can you say that? Heptagon. So if we have a heptagon, that's one side. We gonna have to spread this out some, cause I need to get, ooh. This might be a little challenging, but let's see if we can make it work. Oh, that's another one. Oh, my legs are looking a little. A lot of times in math books, y'all, it says it's not scale to draw. So this is not exact, but you're gonna get the general idea. A drawing not drawn to scale is what it usually says. But let's see if we can make this work. Ah, let's get this here. I still have two more to get up, you all. It's going to go off the board, but let's get these end pieces touching. And let's close our shape because those were the two things we said the end points have to meet at the end point. And our shape must be closed. Wow, did we do it? I believe we did. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that, my friend, is called a heptagon. Now, what if we spin? Let's get one more spin. Wow, I got seven again. Can you believe it? Again. Seven sides is called a help to God. Help to God. That's a help. That's a help to God. Let's see if we can get another polygon. Let's try. Wow, we got six. So I like adding. You see, I got addition, multipl multiplication, adding two things. But if we're going to go from seven to six, what do I need to do? I need to take one of these out. I tell you, let's remove this one over here that's hanging off this side. Okay, since we have heptagon and now we have six, I'm going to erase that because heptagon means six. I mean, help to God means seven. But when we have six sides, that's a hexagon. So now, let's bring these shapes in. Ah. And we're going to bring this in. And it might look a little funny. But I think you all would get the picture. We have six sides. It's connected. All end points are connected. And my shape is closed. So this is a polygon, and this is called a hex hexagon. That's a hexagon. Now, I see some may think, let me close these end points. And one thing I want you to um, realize too, sometimes people might look at, oh, because if I don't close it in, it's not a polygon because my definition says they must be closed. They meet at the endpoints. We meet at the endpoints. There you go. Meeting at the endpoints. All right. <laughs> That's a hexagon. Not drawn to scale, but you get the general idea. Okay? 
Now, what happens if we did three sides? We said three sides is a triangle. We did four sides. We said four sides represents a quadrilateral. Did we do five? So we have four and we add one to it, we have five sides. So if we took one from this, and I'm not gonna keep drawing, but if we have five sides, and I'm just gonna remove some of these so I can write the word. And we know this is what I'm gonna do here because what I want everybody to realize, I'm gonna keep this one up but move it in because sometimes shapes could be, we call it transformed in math sometimes where the position is, is moved. But some people would say, oh, it's upside down. But it does not matter the exact position. What matters is that I have three line segments they meet at the end points, and my shape is closed. So this is a polygon. Now if I have five sides, and I'm gonna just five sides, it is called a pentagon. We already did six sides for a hexagon. We did seven sides, so now we're going to do, what if we have eight sides? Anybody know what it's called? What is that sea creature that has eight legs? It's an octopus, but this is called an octagon. And what if we have nine sides? If we have nine sides, it is called a nonagon. If we have 10 sides, anybody know? 10 years, it's a what? It's a decade. So now we have a decagon. Now, for some of you older viewers, this might be where, might be a little challenging. If we have 11 sides, it's called an undecagon. And we will stop at 12. If we have 12, it is called a do gagan. So all of these, though, are different polygons. My board is a little crowded. Pentagon, but these are all polygons. Now, now I'd like to get to my reading because what I want to do now, we want to take a closer look at polygons, but we're going to do it with the story. And this is where I said, I smiled when Miss Sheila said, put on your listening ears because that's exactly what I thought in advance. Put on your listening ears, put on those seeing eyes because as I read this book, I want you to listen to some of the things that I just, and see what you hear that I just went over. Not only that, as we show the pictures in this book, I want you to see if you can identify some of these polygons. See if you see them in the story. So the book I will be reading today is titled, The Greedy Triangle. Written by Marilyn Burns, illustrated by Gordon Severia. And here, it's a better picture of all those shapes. We have the triangle, we have the quadrilateral, the pentagon, and so forth. Are you ready to read the story? Let's read The Greedy Triangle. Once there was a triangle that was, as most triangles are, always busy. The triangle spent its time holding up roofs, supporting bridges, making music in a symphony orchestra, catching the wind for sailboats, being slices of pie and hash of sandwiches, and much, much more. Can anybody see the triangles? The 
The triangle's favorite thing, however, was to slip into place when people put their hands on their hips. That way, I always hear the latest news, it said, which I can tell my friends. The triangle's friends like hearing the news. One day, the triangle began to feel dissatisfied. I'm tired of doing the same old things, it grumbled. There must be more to life. So the triangle went to see the local shape shifter. Ooh. How may I help you? The shape shifter asked the triangle. I think if I had just one more side and one more angle, said the triangle, my life would be more interesting. That's easy to do, said the shape shifter. Boof. The shape shifter turned the triangle into a quadrilateral. Life changed in a wonderful way. The quadrilateral was happy with all the new things it could do. The quadrilateral could be a baseball diamond, or first, second, or third base. It could take a position on a checkerboard or a chessboard. It could be a television screen, a computer screen, or a movie screen. It could frame windows or frame pictures and much, much more. The quadrilateral's favorite thing, however, was, be, was to be the pages of a book. I learned so many interesting stories that way, it said, which I can tell my friends. The quadrilateral's friend liked hearing the stories. But one day, the quadrilateral began to feel dissatisfied. I'm tired of doing the same old things, it grumbled. There must be more to life. So the quadrilateral went back to the shape shifter. <laughs> How may I help you now? The shape shifter asked the quadrilateral. I think if I had just one more side and one more angle, said the quadrilateral, my life would be more interesting. That's easy to do, said the shape shifter. The shape shifter turned the quadrilateral into a pentagon. Life changed in a wonderful way. The pentagon was happy with all the new things it could do. On a baseball diamond, the pentagon could be home plate. It could be a section on a soccer ball or appear inside whenever someone drew a five-pointed star. The pentagon's favorite thing, however, was to be the headquarters of the United States military near Washington, D.C. I hear all the top secrets that way, it said. It's too bad I can't tell them to my friends. The Pentagon's friends couldn't help feeling left out. After a while, time seemed to pass slowly for the Pentagon and it became dissatisfied. I'm tired of doing the same old things, it grumbled. There must be more to life. So the Pentagon went back to the shape shift. <laughs> so you're here again, the shape shift shifter said to the Pentagon. Now, what would you like? I think if I had just one more side and one more angle, said the Pentagon, my life would be more interesting. That's easy to do, said the shape shifter. The shapeshifter turned the pentagon into a hexagon. Life changed again in a wonderful way. The hexagon was happy with all the new things it could do. The hexagon fit in as floor tiles and houses and patios and fancy crackers at parties and picnics. It worked as the socket of certain boats and the prongs of certain wrenches. The hexagon's favorite thing, however, was to be a cell in a beehive. I love watching the bees as they buzz in and out, it said. The hexagon spent so much time in the beehive, it was too busy to talk to his friends. The friends missed the hexagon and couldn't help feeling ignored. Again and again, 
the shape became restless, dissatisfied, and unhappy with this life. Again and again, it returned to the shape shift for more size and more angles. The shape shifter agreed to turn it into one shape after another, a heptagon, an octagon, a nanogon, a deptagon, and on and on. Finally, the shape had many, many sides and many, many angles. Its sides were so small that it had trouble keeping this balance. Its friends couldn't tell which side it was on and began to abort the shape. One day, when the shape was going down the hill, it began to roll. Faster and faster it went, screeching around corners, crashing into fences and trees, colliding with bicycles and terrifying walkers. At last, the shape came to a stop. It felt tired and dizzy, <laughs> lonely and sad. Enough, thought the shape. I don't know which side is up. I can't keep my balance. My friends don't want me around. The shape could no longer remember why it had been so unhappy as a triangle. Mm, very carefully, it made its way back to the shape shifter. Ooh. Aren't you happy yet? The shape shifter asked. I want to be a triangle again, said the shape. I'm not surprised, said the shape shifter. Poof. The shape shifter turned the shape back into a triangle. The triangle was delighted to have its old shape back again. It kept itself very busy. Once again, it held up roots supported bridges, made music in a symphony orchestra, caught the wind for sailboats, became slices of pie and hassle sandwiches, and much, much more. Still, the triangle's favorite thing was to slip into place where people put their hands on their hips. That way, I always hear the latest news, it said, which I can tell my friends. Its friends liked hearing the news and were glad the triangle was back in shape again. The end. That, my friend, is the greedy triangle. You know, it's nice to learn the proper names of all of these polygons. That is great. But there's one other thing I would also like for you to get from this story. You're thinking, what is it? The triangle went through a lot of changes. Wanted to add Add, wanted more. It went through a lot of changes. But in the end, what did the triangle want? It wanted to be a triangle. It wanted to be what it was created to be. And that, my friends, was a triangle. And what I'd like for you all to get from this story is to be content to be and be satisfied and be happy with the person that you were created to be. Don't worry about being like others because we can do things. We can try to talk like others. We can try to walk like others. We can try to act like others. We can even fix ourselves up to look like others. But when we have added all these characteristics the bottom line is nobody in this whole wide world can ever replace you. 
because you were fearfully and wonderfully made. And if you weren't here, the world just would not be the same. And so I say to you, as I have heard it said before, any world where you can be anybody that you choose to be, I say to you, choose to be you because you are special and you are loved. Don't be greedy. Don't go through this and that to come right back to being you. Love being who you are. I love you and I pray that God will keep you safe and your family safe through this pandemic. Take care, enjoy the rest of your summer, keep reading, keep sharing your stories and keep learning. But by all means, keep being you. Love you. Every day we learn something new. It was nice to talk and read to you. Left that we came together and thankful for your smiling face. We sang, we laughed, we danced, we played. The Sheila's so glad Goodbye. you shared your day.